Hi everyone, welcome back to AMIT Melanoma Series, Melanoma 101. I'm Melissa Wilson, Physician Assistant and Ask an Expert for AMIT Melanoma Foundation. Today we're going to talk about dysplastic nevi or dysplastic nevus. I had touched upon this previously a little tiny bit in the video that talks about how do moles form, but I wanted to come back and make a video just solely for patients that have dysplastic nevi so we can understand a little bit more about what this process is. This is something that a lot of patients will actually be diagnosed with. Um, it's becoming a lot more common. It's something that we actually will see patients in our clinic for because we do have a pigmented lesion clinic but um, other folks will be followed by their dermatologist for this type of disorder. So what is a dysplastic nevus? Essentially, dysplastic nevi are moles that when they're looked at under a microscope are atypical. So what it means is that you have a mole that has atypical findings, whether it be um, the way that the cells are formed, um, they might cytologically look extremely atypical, but they're not cancerous. So that's one thing to very much keep in mind is that dysplastic nevi are not malignant. They're just atypical moles. A lot of times we will see patients have more than just one dysplastic nevus removed during their lifetime. And this is something that can um, be genetic in the sense that folks that have dysplastic nevi have the predilectation or the predetermination to have moles that are atypical not only in appearance but from a cytologic or cellular standpoint. So how do we diagnose dysplastic nevi? A lot of times this will be diagnosed by a medical provider that looks at your skin and says, mm, this doesn't look so great, let's biopsy it. So it's not a clinical diagnosis, it's actually a pathologic diagnosis. This is something that a pathologist will look at your slides um, and decide that your mole has atypical findings but is not a malignant process. Um, dysplastic nevi generally are categorized in the level of severity of the dysplasia or atypic, atypia. So a lot of times you'll see terms on pathology reports that say mildly dysplastic, moderately dysplastic, severely dysplastic. That is just a characterization of how much atypia is present in these cells. The reason that that's important is that the management of these levels of dysplasia can be a little bit different um, based upon how much atypia there is. Um, and what I mean by that is folks that have mild dysplasia or mild atypia in their biopsy um, do not require a re-excision. Same thing for um, moderate dysplasia. Really the only folks that will have re-excisions are folks that have severely dysplastic moles or severe atypia if the margin is positive. And really the goal here is just to get a negative margin. You don't need a specific um, number of millimeters the way that you do with melanoma. You just really need to have a clear edge so there's no more mole cells at the edge of the biopsy. So that's one thing to keep in mind that makes it a little bit different um, than the management of melanoma. Um, why did I get this? A lot of times folks um, will come and have had prior dysplastic nevi. Again, it can be a um, predetermined thing with your genetics. Um, you can also have some dysplastic nevi from pretty bad sun exposure. So um, there are certain different things that can cause dysplastic nevi to form, um, but that's, that's something that a lot of patients will ask. Um, when do I need more surgery? I did just touch on this, but it's really for patients that have severely dysplastic moles that are with a positive margin. And that's extremely important because the border between severely dysplastic and melanoma can sometimes be extremely tight. And so when we see moles that are very, very atypical from a pathologic standpoint, we wanna make sure that we get all those cells out of the skin. Um, does this mean that I will get melanoma? Certainly not, but it certainly does also increase your risk of developing a melanoma to some extent. And the reason for that is if you make moles that have atypia on a cellular level, then certainly those moles could evolve over time. Um, it may not be that this is from a genetic basis. It could be that this is from sun exposure. And so things that patients that have dysplastic moles 
um, because they have cellular atypia, it does have a small increased risk of, of developing melanoma um, in the future. But it does certainly not mean that if you have dysplastic nevi that you will ever have a melanoma. However, oftentimes we do see both of these processes um, in patients that we see. But again, it doesn't mean that you're going to develop a melanoma just because you have dysplastic nevi. I just want to be clear. Um, what is the most important thing in patients that have dysplastic nevi? It really is follow-up. So normally when we make moles, we make moles that we are genetically supposed to have until puberty, and then anything we get after that is as a result of sun exposure. Folks that make dysplastic nevi or have what's called dysplastic nevus syndrome will continue to make moles throughout their lifetime. So follow-up is extremely important. Most of these patients will have rather than you know one skin exam a year a lot of times these patients will have one skin exam every six months or sometimes closer if they have many many moles so this is something that requires continued lifelong skin exam skin exam follow-up it is not always necessary to biopsy every single mole that is atypical and this is one instance where things like mole mapping or total body photography can be extremely useful because patients with dysplastic nevi syndrome will continue to make moles you can't always get a great gauge of what's new what's changed and so sometimes photography can be an extremely beneficial tool in these patients specifically I hope that this video helped to clear up a little bit about dysplastic nevi, what they are, what you need to do for them if you do get diagnosed with them, but I'm always available via the website at aimatmelanoma.org. If you have additional questions, you can reach out to me via the Ask an Expert line. We'll be back with more videos, but I hope you have a wonderful day.